Hi friends! Today we're taking a closer look and reviewing the Faber-Castell Gold Faber Coloured Pencils. I was gifted these pencils back in February by a lovely pair of subscribers, Holly and Mark Neal, so thank you to both of you. I hadn't come across these before and Holly and Mark wanted me to try them out and give my opinion, so that's what we're doing today. Let's look at the pencils themselves before getting into the nitty gritty practical side of things. The gold fiber pencils are of course made by Faber-Castell who manufacture the coveted polychromos pencils which I absolutely love. These pencils are different to the polys though as these are the first wax based pencils produced by the company, the polychromos being an oil based pencil. So immediately we can kind of liken them to the Prismacolor and other soft cord colored pencils. The gold fiber come come in sets of 12, 24, 36 and 48. The set I have here is a 48 and is the full colour range available. The colours offered are vibrant and pigmented and look so enticing to use when you first open it up. Now this is one of the only downfalls of the gold fiber in my opinion as the core set of 48 pencils just doesn't seem enough especially when compared to the 120 available in the polychromos. The set contains a nice selection of bright yellows, pinks and blues, greens, all of those colours, but somewhat lacks when it comes to the neutral tones which are used for portraiture, both animal and people alike. This is why when choosing a subject to draw, I opted for a nice vivid hummingbird so I could show off all of those bright colours. For some, a limited palette like the 48 set is a blessing as I know a lot of coloured pencil artists get overwhelmed at the choice of colours sometimes. So perhaps this could play to your advantage. I'll also mention that the pencils are available to buy open stock, so once you run out of one, you can feel confident that you can replace just the one and not have to buy a whole new set like some other coloured pencil sets, which is fantastic. The pencils themselves are a gorgeous 3.3mm lead glued into a wood surrounding, which makes them strong against breakage. This is what Faber-Castell do with the polychromos as well, they actually bond them to the wood. The barrel is this dark blue grey colour, almost like a Payne's grey and finished with a matte, environmentally friendly water-based varnish as it states on the literature included in the set. This feels super smooth and is really, really nice to hold. The pencil is quite slim. If you're familiar with Prismacolor, it's kind of like that thickness, which is smaller than a Polychromos counterpart and it's also smaller than uh, like a Derwent pencil and also some Caran d'Ache pencils as well. The barrel features the Faber-Castell logo and the gold fiber brand name on one side and on the other side you have a large barcode which makes it easy for purchasing open stock it has the manufacturing company and also the pencil number notice how there's no color name <laughs> yeah we'll uh, we'll get onto that one later the end of the pencil boasts a generous end cap of the pencil colour which makes it really easy for identification when storing your colours. So if you're just going and you need to pick a yellow, that end cap is there as an easy indication for you to pick a yellow pencil. The gold fiber are in the student or studio grade of supplies as indicated by the blue band on the packaging and boast of their ultra light fast qualities. While no actual light fast ratings are supplied on the pencils or on the sheet included in the set or on Faber-Castell's website, I can only presume that from their other high quality products that they use the best quality pig and are fairly light fast but through searching the internet I can't actually find any detailed information on the exact light fast ratings for each individual pencil or what they exactly mean by ultra light fast. As they are a student grade pencil however and a lot cheaper than their polychromos counterparts I'm going to go ahead and say that they're not as light fast as the artist grade products available so you want to keep this in mind when creating your works and for some light fastness isn't really an issue but if you're making something and claiming it can last for x amount of years just be wary that the light fastness of the pencils could be less than you might think and it might not actually last for the amount of years that you state. 
For those interested in the sharpening aspect and what kind of point you can get with these, they sharpen exceptionally well and maintain a really sharp point. I used my Swordfish Icon for sharpening these and had absolutely no issues with breakage, had nothing go wrong with these at all, they sharpened to lovely points every time that I used them. So let's look at how these pencils perform and as I mentioned I chose a really bright colourful hummingbird to test drive these pencils as I really wanted to showcase how bright and vivid those reds and greens are. The reference photo I'm using came from Wildlife Reference Photos and I'll link it below if you want to have a go at this yourself. The paper I used for testing these out was the Fabriano Artistico Hot Pressed 140 pound watercolour paper in extra white. So straight off as you put these pencils to the paper it's like butter. They are so smooth and slick. If you're used to working with harder cord pencils, this can take a little bit of getting used to, but after a little while using the pencils, it's hard to see how you don't use these all the time. I used both a light and heavy pressure within my drawing, and you can get some super nice variations in the pigment, just like with any other pencil. Layering is really easy with these as well. I could apply several thin layers before the surface got too slick, but even when the surface was quite slick, I could still layer down and blend to get the colours and tones I was after. When applying the layers you get a really nice build up of colour and can achieve a really pigmented application effortlessly. This is great if you're drawing like really vivid subjects with bold colour but you can also build a soft subtle colour for soft floaty scenes and delicate details as well. I liken the layering abilities of these pencils somewhere between the Prismacolor and the Polychromos. They're a really nice middle ground and blend of the best qualities of both of those pencils in my opinion. Blending of these pencils was again a really nice experience. When layering, the pencils almost blend themselves after just two or three applications and it requires almost no effort. This is extremely good if you have weak wrists and you don't like to burnish with your pencils or blend with a white pencil or anything to achieve a really smooth look. The pencils are so buttery smooth that the colours and layers combine and sit nicely with one another, eliminating the paper grain and anything else that lays beneath. This could be a downside however if you like to leave a little grain of paper for some sort of textural elements or if you have a lot of layers to build up to form an area before blending. As the pencils blend straight from the get-go, it could lead to some muddy looking areas and ultimately when it comes to adding details with super sharp points and everything being slick and blended, it's going to be hard to add those details which is what I experienced with my drawing here. Because you've got those slick layers underneath and you're trying to add detail with soft cord pencils, the details aren't as pronounced and can look a little bit clumsy. And I struggled with this and actually brought in the help of some of the Polychromos pencils to add in the details in some places. Not all over, just in one or two places where I was struggling a little bit. This was purely down to the fact I think that I had built up about 12 to 15 layers and maybe pushed a little bit too hard and burnished too early with my white pencil but it's a downside to the pencils if you're wanting them for details but this isn't necessarily specific to the gold fibers this is kind of the case with a lot of wax based pencils as well this leads on beautifully to using them in conjunction with other pencils. Now I've only tested them with the Polychromos and they work so well together, let me tell you. This is like a dream combo. They are absolutely perfect with one another. You can use the gold fibers for your base, you're building up your tones and uh, blending everything to a super smooth finish. And then you can use a Polychromos on top to add in details and refine areas. Now even though there's that slick surface is from the build up from the gold fibers the polychromos glide on top and the details stick they the details hold in there and as the gold fiber are a wax based pencil i'm also going to go ahead and say that they will work wonders with prismacolors and other wax based ones those type of pencils tend to work really well together with one another anyway one of the key things about these pencils 
is the white pencil. It's so gorgeously opaque and uh, it's so nice to work with. I actually use the white in a majority of my drawings now as it's just fantastic to use for whiskers, uh, white fine lines and all of those other things. It lays down over darker colours superbly and even if you don't want the set of the gold fathers you at least want to add this one pencil to your collection because it's amazing so let's look at some of the downsides of the pencils which aren't many the main one being the color range in the 48 set they've included a gold and a silver pencil which i really don't see the point in I personally have never seen a need to use a metallic pencil when creating ki the kinds of things that I do. Even when creating like metal textures, gold or silver isn't really the pencil that you should reach for or that I reach for. I did test the gold and the silver pencil out on black paper as well to see what kind of metallic effect you got and it, it wasn't great. It's just, just say, I don't know why they decided to include it or why they include it in other pencil sets as well. Even if you did use these pencils in some way, I can see the slots that they take up in the set being filled much better by some greys, browns or even flesh tones, just to give it like a bit more of a well-rounded palette. The other colours included are pretty standard, although there's not too many neutral tones for me personally, the colours are great and can be mixed to form other colours. One really salty moment for me though was the fact that there's no walnut brown. Now if you know me, you know that I love, love walnut brown and I use it in every single drawing. But no, instead of a walnut brown, what did I find? A Van Dyke brown in its place, which uh, doesn't really see the light of day here in my studio. But the overall colour palette, it is a nice selection of colours, but if you're into drawing nature or anything that uses neutral tones, uh, you're going to struggle a little bit because there's just like five or six key neutral tones and the rest are all of those bright colours. The other major downside is the fact that there's no colour names on the barrel. For me, this is majorly confusing as I'm so used to the polychromos and having the names there. I don't know about you guys, but I rarely go by the number of the colour. Numbers like that confuse me too much and I prefer a nice sounding colour name to a number. I know others probably will disagree and say it's a good thing that there's no colour names because it makes it more universal, but all set pencil sets have different numbers. Not all pencil sets follow the same numbering rule. All different pencil sets don't always use the same pigment numbering scheme, which kind of makes it difficult to remember every single number, especially when you have like five or six different pencil sets that you go between. And I know, I know, pencil brands don't all use the same naming format either but at least there's some crossover there like most burnt ochres are the same most of the browns and greys kind of have the same name I suppose the only way just having the numbers would be good if you was to only use Faber-Castell as a brand because then everything's the same all their color ranges use the same numbering system but then they also use the same naming system and I, I don't know I could go on about this for a while but let's just say if you like having color names on the barrel then these don't have that and it can get confusing one way to combat that is to make your own swatch cards which I did uh, when I first tested these out and I do have a video on just how to make your own which I'll link as a card up above and I also have the gold fiber swatches which I created available for download on my website which I'll link in the description below for you that being said though when you are working and you think in terms of names you go to choose a Van Dyke Brown and you don't know the Van Dyke Brown number it's not ideal although with a small color range like you've got in the gold fiber here it's not actually hard to find the Van Dyke Brown because you just have to pick from two now there are the only downsides that I have to these pencils which are let's be honest they are just superficial downsides I had absolutely no issues with the pencils themselves they performed really well just as I expected a wax pencil to perform actually they surpassed that expectation because of how versatile they can be in their application when using different pressures and different line weights and that kind of thing as I mentioned, the only kind of downside to the performance could be the addition of details over multiple layers, but that's not specific to these pencils. That's a quality most wax pencils have, so I'm not going to judge 
them just based on that. As you can see from my outcome of this drawing, there's still detail there. It still looks amazing. The colors are bold and vibrant and the surface is well covered and you've got some details in there. Now, if you're thinking of buying these beauties, they will set you back on Amazon almost 38 pounds for the 48 set, which is an amazing price given the quality and the application of them. Open stock pencils cost anywhere from £1 to £1.50 depending on where you get them. Currently at this time of recording this, Jackson's Art Supplies and Art Discount are the only places I can find which stock these, which are actual art stores, as well as on Amazon. I'd also just like to mention that I did try and blend these pencils out with a solvent, because I know that some of you guys like to blend that way, and they blend extremely well. They're even more bright and pigmented, and you can get a few more layers on the paper by using a solvent um, to blend in this way. So they work great, whatever blending method you use, whether you use them white pencil, whether you're using a solvent, whether you're burnishing, the pencils apply superbly. So that's pretty much it for this review. As you can tell, I really like the pencils and as a student grade pencil, I think they perform exceptionally well and are a welcome addition to my particular collection. And I'll be using them every now and then when a project calls for them, especially as they work so well with my beloved Polychromos. Now, I want to know what you guys think of these pencils. What do you think of the final piece here? I truly believe that this piece shows off everything they're capable of. And I purposely picked a complicated reference photo to do this drawing so that they could either shine or flop and I think they most certainly did shine. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and if you want to know any kind of other information which I perhaps haven't covered in this review, pop your question below and I'll make sure that I answer it ASAP. If you're new here and want more coloured pencil content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tick that bell icon as well so that you never miss an upload. I post new videos every single Friday for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Gold Faber Coloured Pencils. If you did, give it a bigger thumbs up. Have a happy day full of creating and I will see you next week. Bye.